being a migrant farm worker and having those struggles in his life. And I can relate to that. And that is something that I will talk to you about. It's different issues, but one of them is about farm workers. Um, I have, uh, when I, when I was with Saul and Jonathan, I was thinking, okay, I'm a grandmother. Um, I wonder why uh, Jonathan is inviting me. I was, I was thinking, I was confused, and I said, well, wait, I've had the honor of working with farm workers and helping them to some of the difficult issues that we faced when we worked in the field. And besides that, for years I have been in the front lines of many, many issues in our in our community. But again, you know, it's really great for you to be here. I'm inspired because we are ready. We are ready to move aside and for you to take the leadership. And actually, we don't have to move aside. You've already pushed us aside, which is really great. And so as hard as, as our generation has worked to make progress in many of the, of the issues that we face as youngsters, sometimes, keep in mind, you know, sometimes we are successful. Sometimes we, we, um, we, we are, we're not, we don't make the changes that we really, really want to make. But I shouldn't worry so much about that because you're coming and we are stepping aside and you are taking over. In my years with the community, I've learned a lot from mentors. How many of you have heard of or know of Cesar Chavez? Great. How many about Dolores Huerta? As you know, you know, um, uh, Cesar Chavez was the founder of La Unión del Pueblo Intero, as well as of the United Farm Workers. And the United Farm Workers, uh, Dolores Huerta was the co-founder, right? I want you to know, oh, that's me uh, at a very young age, uh, with Cesar Chavez and a former bishop, Fitzpatrick, who was the bishop here in our in our area. But um, uh, Dolores Huerta, you know, Cesar has passed on, but he continues to inspire me and inspire the work that we do in the community. But Dolores Huerta is 88 years old. And she's still going hard, going tough. Um, you know, so so how can how can one say, um, well, I'm tired of this work. I'm tired of helping out of the community or working with the community because she still serves as an example. She's still going across this country and many times in other parts of the country too, uh, other parts of the world, organizing and showing that it's all up to us to make the the uh, differences that we that we need to make. In farm work, you know that the working conditions are really difficult. Do you know somebody that has worked in the fields? Or maybe you're so young, but maybe, maybe your parents, right? Or maybe your grandparents. Um, and Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta, when they organized the union, they knew that the United Farm Workers could deal with some of the grievances in the fields, the bad working conditions, the miserable wages, Right, and then also they knew that at the end of the day, when the farm workers came to their communities, we still have to deal with the issues of education, with the issues of health, with the issues of housing, and so that that was um, that is the that is the the beginning of the creation of La Unión del Pueblo Intero, so that we could deal with those issues that that we have in our colonias. How many of you know a colonia or know what a colonia is? Ay, que bueno. So you can buy me. <laughs> That's right here. Um, so uh, many times when Dolores or Cesar would used to come to South Texas and work with us and train us, they would say, okay, we're going to have this house meeting and we're going to have you invite, um, let's say you invite 30 people to this meeting where you gather, where you talk about the issue that is going on in that community. And then you strategize and you, you research and you strategize and you think about how are you going to solve it. So you invite 30 and 10 folks show up. It's likely that you are going to be disappointed and that you might think, well, this is not going to be successful. What they told us is, do not wait, never wait. Work with the few people that you have. The effort will start with smaller victories and then larger victories and larger victories as you see as you as you succeed you will see how people will come and people will join right 
in my generation, while we did not, uh, you know, solve all the different problems, we learned a lot throughout the way about the um, about coming uh, to solutions. This is what I was talking about, you know, the house meetings where people gather and discuss. And the big thing with us is, if you're in a situation that is negative, if you're in a situation that impacts your life, you need to be able to also participate in it. You need to be part of helping solve it, right? Because at the end of the day, it is your issue, it is your problem, and so you need to, to be very active. Okay, in farm work, about two million people that tend and harvest the fruits and vegetables that we see at the store. Every single day, rain, cold weather, really hot sun, the farm workers are out there. And like I said, their wages are miserably low. Many times when we work in the fields, we are exposed to very toxic chemicals because they need to be, they don't need to, but they are sprayed. Maybe they need to be sprayed on the crops to make them to get to the, you know, being harvested and get to the store. From, from all of this, we can say that there's still an issue with farm workers in the fields. I went to work in the fields like many of you have, may, maybe some of you have worked in the fields. The, Jonathan was talking about a mi being a migrant farm worker. I was a migrant farm worker and I'm sure that many here in the valley are migrant farm workers. We, we worked in the fields in those days, there were no toilets. I want you to imagine this. You go to school, you earn your degree, you're anxious to get out to work, and then they sent you to work in a place that doesn't have toilets. Está difícil. I could use another word, but I'm among young children, <laughs> so I will not. Está difícil. But the thing is that, that that's the way it was when we went. And what we had to do is we had to wear pants and then a skirt. Because if we had to go to the bathroom and there were no trees or canals where we could hide, this country, this nation, even though farm workers do such skilled and important work, not even enough to have toilets in the fields for us, or clean drinking water, or hand washing facilities. So the, 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 sh the, the skirts were so that we could do we could form circles and the, and the person that needed to go would hide in the center, right? And so that, that, that was then, through the work of the union, through the work of some people that are here that have, been, that have worked in the union. You might know one of them, Olga Cardoso, who is back there, worked at Lupe for many years too. We, have a, we also have, um, <laughs> we also have Esther Herrera, She's a master's student from here working on her PhD, we're very proud of. And they work at, um, she worked at Lupe and Esther is here at Lupe as well as, like I said, Tanya. But in those days, that was, a, that was the life of the farm workers. We had to work hard, we changed policies. In the 80s, we were celebrating that we could get the grower to have toilets in the fields. And now, a lot of, uh, you know, you all have cell phones. How can you help? How can you take action? If you see a field and you see farm workers harvesting the crops that are gonna end up in the store, check it out. Do they have the toilets? You can see them, you know, they're, they're portable toilets. If they don't, take out your cell phone and call the health department, because they're the ones that are in charge of sending inspectors out there to make sure that the grower provides those toilets. So y if you see something, take out your cell phone and call 383-6221. Then the, and the, give them the location and they will go out and make sure that now the farm workers, so that when you go to the stores and you buy your fruits and vegetables, at least you have a hint of that you're doing something to, uh, to help the farm workers. Another issue that, that, that we have that has been very, very difficult for many, many thousands of students is DACA. How many of you have heard of DACA, the Deferred Action for students, right? Um, around here, we have thousands of DACA youth. Over a million young immigrants were brought into the United States as young ones with their parents without documents. They have lived here, they have studied here, they, they, they couldn't work, 
They didn't have a driver's license. They didn't have a social security number. So they got, mas they got their bachelor's and then their master's and continued to study. What other opportunity did they have? They didn't have those documents with which to work. But in 2012, President Obama created DACA, which it gave them temporary legal status and gave them a driver's license and gave them a social security and a permit to work. That is when I at Lupe found, when I found out, when we heard about the 2012 program, we hired uh, DACA students to come and work, very well-educated students that had not had the opportunity. Now, most of this, uh, most of these DACA students are, are in jeopardy of being deported. Did you know that there's 25,000 DACA that live here in the Valley? A lot of them are the ones that you probably see in your classroom. You probably have, you know, you have them in your community. You have them here at the university. These people are not criminals. These people are not asking the government for anything for free. They have spent years in school. They want to work and they want to contribute to the uh, only country that they know, which is this, the United States. While you may have heard about DACA, you probably don't know how DACA came about. We may be thinking, well, it was Obama. It was the goodness of his heart that he gave us um, the DACA program. I'm here to tell you that students like yourself had to organize for many years. They organized, they fought, they got people to vote. It was then that President Obama created and signed the executive order for um, DACA. Undocumented youth, they demanded. They even handcrafted the policy so that the president could then sign in. So the victory, the work, is on, on the students, on the young people, on the DACA and DACA supporters that organize to be able to get to this. Sometimes you have victories, like I said earlier. Sometimes you have setbacks. Five years after DACA was implemented, guess what happened? Do you know what happened five years after DACA was implemented? What happened? Louder? Trump. Exactly. Trump ended. Trump ended the program. It was a program that now 800 students have their, their faith in the hands of a court. If the courts do not rule in favor of DACA, these young people will lose their work permits. They will lose their driver's license. These young people who are your friends, your neighbors, your students, fellow students, will soon be undocumented and again will be at the risk of being deported to a country that they do not know. This is happening in our communities. This is happening among in the Valley and throughout the United States. Now, very brief information on DACA, and we need to take action. Uh, marches in your community. You need to support the Dreamers when they ask you to sign petitions. You need to call your congressmen. You need to ask them to pass legislation to protect dreamers, to protect your friends, to protect your family, because many times there's mixed families in, 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 um, that some have U.S. citizenship and others that still do not have their documents. But the other thing is that soon you will be able and eligible to register to vote. And not only register to vote, but get your friend to vote. The issue of DACA is critical. It is about your fellow students and your friends that might get deported. And get involved, be part of the solution. In the next election, when is the next election coming up? November. What month? November. November, November. And you need to be ready to make your voices heard through your vote. How many of you are at least 18? 
Ahí están, bebés. Son muy poquitos. Um, so soon you will be, soon you will be 18, right? Soon you will be 18 and you will be uh, able to register to vote. But right now, even though you're not 18, and even though you can register to vote, I bet you know at least 10 people that are registered to vote in your family or in your community. Or you know students that are already 18 that are registered to vote. You, do you, kn you, you, you know at least 10, right? More is great, but 10 is an awesome start. So in the next election, be ready to support not only yours, but also, I want, you to, I want you to make your list of those 10 people that you will work with so that they can vote until you're 18. And when you're 18, you vote, and then you get them to vote. At the organization where I work at, at Lupe, we have a, a ven, ven con 10, come with 10. We have many members that are undocumented. They can't vote. But they go around the community, and they know their list, I'm put 30, 40 or more, right? They are in charge of talking to them, of talking to them about the issues. These are leaders in the colonias, in our communities, and they get them out to vote. When you have your list, you'll probably walk into your fellow students in the, in the hallway at the schools, at the university, and you tell them, hey, ya te registraste, está listo para votar, estos son los temas. You need to be able to, to educate them on the importance of the, of the vote. And you may say, nombre, pues yes, what's 10? You know what? That we studied our participation of the Lupe leaders in our community, and over 80% of the people that we had went out to vote because they had that personal connection. In comparison to 15%, 1-5% of the general population. Just think about it. Think about it. All of you working together with 10 each, can you imagine the difference that you can make? It'll be really, really incredible. So don't forget. Um, one of the last examples is over the last few years, we ha I don't know if you noticed them, but we've had a lot of National Guard in the community. We've had more DPS patrols, those uh, cars with the Texas map on the, on the doors, right? More than ever. The National Guard, of course, we know helps in natural uh, disasters like a hurricane or, or wild, wild fires or to educate community on natural disasters. But in the past, the past two, two um, governors that we've had here in Texas, they have deployed over 1,000 more DPS troopers. So if you're getting tickets, now you know why. They're everywhere. And since the summer of 2014, they, they, uh, they have deployed 1,000 DPS troopers here in the Texas border. In 2019, they hope to have 1,400 National Guard at our border. You would think that we are at war. Our border is not at war. These are families that are coming across to, ha to have a better life for their children that, that, that want to live in peace. And so, let me tell you about the expense. You know how much it has cost so far for DPS and the National Guard? $63.3 million to have them here in, in, our, in our frontera. Think about what these funds could do. How could they, how much more help they could do to our, to our communities, improve the schools, better wages for the teachers, you know, better learning tools in the classroom, but the government prefers to spend this money on the border, bringing in the National Guard as if we were at war, or bringing DPS troopers all throughout our valley. Even in, the, in, the, in our areas, the colonias, you know that in a colonia, if it rains one day, hard rain, they flood. There's no, no drainage. Their homes are, are, are flooded out. You would think that it takes a hurricane, it doesn't. Imagine what 63.3 million could do to help those colonias. So, with all this you say, well, how can, what can you do to help the immigrant community and put some sense into the 
officials, of those politicians, right? Well, you can march and you can keep marching. You can call members of Congress and ask them to protect the immigrant community and create a pathway to citizenship so that they do not always have to be in fear if some president comes in and denies them the right to a work permit or a driver's license or a social security number, right? Join organizations like, like this one. This is so awesome, you all, from all the different schools here in the Valley. That is great. Or my favorite is Lupe, right? You could also join Lupe. And organize and take on the many issues that we need to fight on. And like I said, there are many issues that you can, that you can stand on, right? If you're unsure, you're unaware, do the research and stand against at least one of the different issues that I have discussed with you, one of the injustices. You have to take a stand. Don't be a bystander. But most important, you can vote. Elected officials and candidates at every level should be challenged. You should challenge them to explain their position on the issues that matter to each one of you. This is your community. This is our, our community. We all need to be aware of the injustices and the racism that happens and occurs. We need to get involved. We need to demand change. We need to inform public officials of the fact that you are voters or that you will soon be voters. Make candidates speak to the issues and then you choose the best folks that you want to and then go out and vote. Then remember, you need to share that information with the folks on your voting list. Okay, nobody showed their hands. How many of you know 10 voters? A ver. 10 voters. Those of you that didn't raise your hand, go out and find them. They're there. There's plenty. There's thousands registered here in the Valley. Okay, so make your list. But most important, you can vote. Elected officials and candidates at every level, right? You have to challenge them. They have to know that you're here and that you're a voter and that you're an active voter or that you're going to soon be a voter and you're going to get involved. Make candidates speak to the issues. Remember, you need to work it. You need to share this information. I've given you a lot to think about, but I really want to to finish that, that with the fact that I guess even if we go to school and we, and we continue with, with our careers, we really cannot forget those amongst us that need our support in one way or another, starting with the farm workers. Think about if they, if they didn't harvest the fruit and it's Mexican, if we didn't harvest that food, the fruits and vegetables, who else is going to work in the fields? Who's going to bring that to us? And therefore, think about it. Think about when you're driving out there and look to see they have clean drinking water and toilets, like I said. I know that it's a lot, but I am also confident, very confident that we're placing the future in very, very capable hands. And you're it, folks. Así es que adelante y denle duro y la lucha sigue. Thank you.